Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi. This was a planned movie, but got squashed because I think Solo, Star Wars Story, kind of didn't, it was like a commercial failure according to like Wikipedia and shit. So, we have a TV series, Obi-Wan Kenobi, on Disney. I'll get this out of the way right, right at the front. It's awesome. Watch it. However, there are issues I have with it that sometimes boggle my mind, like where they make these decisions and why they choose to do one thing or another. But as a whole, Obi-Wan Kenobi is great. It has the things I wanted to see, some course correction, some really great performances and it's just these little nitpicks that maybe drive me nuts but look on, on the whole this is the type of stuff i was looking for this show takes place 10 years after star wars episode 3 revenge of the sith and it's directed by deborah chow so round of applause for deborah deborah chow did great ewan mcgregor's amazing most of the cast around the character are great there are little minor things i think if you're gonna do cartoon stuff because i'm a big fan of rebels and the clone wars cartoons animation you gotta be a little careful on how you bring them in because it's jarring like i know this is star wars and i'm gonna see creatures and all nutty things but it, it doesn't work sometimes with the tone that's just like a minor thing but this is so much fun you get to see, uh, you know who's in it? Jimmy Smits, who plays uh, Organa, or whatever the fuck his name is, Bail Organa. So you get this connection to the prequels, and then the life of what the new Star Wars should have been, it should be starting here, and in The Mandalorian. And even with all the flaws, the shows have heart. They have a feeling that you these people love the the... The content they're making for themselves and for the fans. Um, when I look at the new Star Wars, I'll give, I always give The Force Awakens a pass. What they tried to do, what they did, Daisy Ridley was amazing. She's just draws your attention to this um, young girl, and the whole thing kind of gets a pass. But when you look back at it with the other two movies, it's a whole shit show. So I'm not a fan of this new Star Wars that they ruined and disgraced and shit on the property. This is the course correction, in my opinion. It's a way of getting things back on track with some heart and soul of what Star Wars was, and this gives it to me. From the beginning to the end, you're, you're not, there's not too many low points. It's got a good rhythm in what it's trying to do, the story it's conveying, but there are some things that just drive me mad, and it's more of a personal thing. But this is something everybody's going to love. Watch it. It's, it's just... Ewan McGregor in uh, Phantom Menace was amazing. Qui-Gon. It all comes back to what I wanted to see at the end of the Revenge of the Sith before they decided to do sequels and ruin everybody. This is a step in the right direction. It's a great way to smooth things over with fans. There's some... Um, um, really great cinematography. Some of the shots are just mind blowing, amazing. How they use the camera and what it's done, what it's used for when done right, is elements of just close ups and emotion that's really felt and it resonates throughout the whole series. This is a, tri uh, a triumph for sure. We've got six episodes only, and it's just probably perfect. There's not that feeling I had when I did the uh, Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett, where it felt jarring, and the editing was weird, the story pacing threw me off, and it's connecting to the Mandalorian, and just didn't sit well with me. But as a whole, I like it, and I'm enjoying it. I'm just getting to the parts that maybe people um, see that I see, that don't ruin me, don't ruin it, but man, it just makes it hard sometimes when you're pulled right out of the show. Um, 
one thing right off the bat, and I'm going to say this to all movie makers, plot, whatever the fuck you're doing, stop with the children escaping people running around. You have kidnappers. I know they're not there to blast her with a blaster and kill a little kid, but stop the tense moments of suspense running through trees and running around trees. Stop it. It looks fucking stupid. And it just pulls me out ridiculous. It just seems so odd of a thing to do. Now, if you wanted to do it, it's done very well in other movies or other, you know, I can't say maybe TV shows, but you have a awesome actress child playing Princess Leia and she's, oh, she's just awesome. And you want to have her running from kidnappers. You got to do it better. This was dumb. So dumb, it pulled me right out of the show. And, you know, it's just, it's just weird to see this type of decision made. And okay, you know, if you're going to do it, like, to get kids pumped up that they can do things, I'm all for it. But I think you got to do it better. And that's, like, right off the bat. But. Everything cohesively is so well done. You, these are just the things that people skip over. Don't even bat an eye at. But it just really didn't seem realistic. And everything just pulled away. Like, like first off, I know Leia is invulnerable. Luke is invulnerable. Owen's invulnerable. Aunt Beru. They cannot be harmed or die in any way. Harm, sure. You can show how... Um, Owen hurts his leg and he limps like cool things you might want to connect but unless you're doing tw Twin Peaks timelines or alternate realities don't bother I mean do good suspense you're worried about your kid you can do it right you know, th there's, there's a way to do it where you know people are you know keying into these things I remember Solo a Star Wars story they got Chewbacca like hanging off a truck, um, a, a, a platform train, and they really want me to believe that he has, there's a chance he's going to die. No, because you're ready, Han Solo's not dying in, this in that movie. Do it better. And that's like a little nitpick, but you can, you can do a, ch a ch child running for, for their safety, do it much better with this odd cutting and obvious stuff and even if because i even tried to entertain the thought they're just playing with her but no they're not fucking playing with her they're on the fucking princess's planet alderaan infiltrating kidnapping and they gotta get out and the whole plot is to set up uh, obi-wan kenobi draw him out of hiding and that's basically the first season let's kidnap princess leia because someone found in the archives that they have a connection between Obi-Wan and Bill Organa and the old, you know, right before Order 66 was given. So they think, oh, well, let's kidnap Leia. They'll ask Obi-Wan for help, which they do. Then he falls into the trap. And that's basically the first season. The underlying story of Obi-Wan disconnecting and not being as strong as he was, being 10 years after, plagued by his failure and doubt. It's really heartfelt and done well. There's that progression throughout the season of him gaining his confidence or reconnecting. That's done super well. You also have the flip side of that with Vader. Props to Hayden Christensen coming back and playing him. Getting the voices. It just sounds great. Even when they did a little twisty twist and showed um, Hayden end. Um, you know, the voice is going, I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but Darth Vader's helmet's damaged, and, um, you get to see him and, uh, you know, hear the original Darth Vader voice, but it's broken up between him and Hayden Christensen, and it's really done well, gives you that blend of, um, you know, who we're dealing with, and cause you got the... Clone Wars animated show, which was great, and is that act, voice actor. This is playing hate, 
playing Anakin, and his that blend fits well and it cohesively, cohesively comes together. And I'm just filled with joy. The show is just you know running on all cylinders. It's just perfection in some parts. Really, a lot to talk about when you think about just that. Like it's Obi Wan's redemption, his failure to come out of it, and you know get back to his old self let's say well that's kind of weird right it's kind of a weird thing to say <laughs> and to actually reconnect with the force and grow because there's a little thing that goes on with um him trying to connect with qui-gon his old master because at the end of revenge of the sith yoda tells him the training you have your old master but he's not what he was he barely uses the force you know he seems to avoid it and you know it's that whole story is just done well and it's expected and something you don't roll your eyes at it just seems you know normal i do have a problem though with this whole extinct ancient you know when luke is like 20 something years old he's like oh this is, you know it's fucking 25 years ago stop it like this time gap between jedi being extinct has never sat well with me and it never will because you never gave it enough time if it's George Lucas's fault or, you know, whatever. However, these little things are just minor. Now, as the main plot revolves around Obi-Wan getting his mojo back and going to save Leia, there's also that flip side, like I said, with Vader, but there's subplots of the Inquisitors, right? There's this group of possibly, or definitely some, but you don't know if they're all former younglings or Jedi who were captured and twisted to the dark side for lack of a better word they're like Sith evil Jedi they have their lightsabers and their special blades and their spinning things right from the TV show the cartoon it is it's good for the most part but I did not and still do not buy the third sister's arc it's one of the things that bothers me the most about the show. Now, third sister, fifth brother, whatever the fuck they're doing, Grand Inquisitor. These are the henchmen sent by Vader and the Empire. And they, well, let's say it's ten years after, you know, there's this whole plot and they're exterminating the Jedi. Let's get rid of them. And you got the Underground Railroad type thing. And as these Inquisitors go around, one of them, the third sister, breaks from the norm and starts disobeying because she really wants Obi-Wan dead and she wants to gain favor with Vader and the Emperor. Seems basic and the play between the other Inquisitors, not my favorite. But they do this arc with the third sister that I don't buy and as soon as I, I don't know what episode it was there's an episode where my eyes rolled back in my head like stop this is bullshit like you can't you don't do this and they did it now to me it's worse than a kid running and not capturing the impact of a little girl running fast and people she's trying to evade people and it really this would be the main part that I would say is the weakest, in my opinion. I don't know what they're setting this up for. I don't know what they want to see happen. But I don't buy it. I don't care. And it really bothered me in the sense of... You have... I see, without giving spoilers. You have this character, and there's a twist, flip, and it, it doesn't work for me. I'll just say that. And, like, the other minor thing, leave Luke the fuck alone. See, when they did the thing with Leia, it all fit. Her attitude, her kidnapping, you know, Princess, Bail Organic, and it worked. When you see Leia for the first time in Star Wars, A New Hope, well, it wasn't called New Hope, but you know this chick has been through the shit. Don't fuck with Luke's childhood. Why didn't you have him asleep and they put a fucking injector in him to put him in a coma or something? Whatever. Just don't fucking involve Luke in this shit. 
No, you gotta go look back. Did he ever see a load? Did he see a lightsaber? No, he was like unconscious. He's running around. You don't set up Luke in Star Wars A New Hope and then ever think for a second he had such a brush with death. It, it doesn't ring true to me and it's something again boggles my mind. Stay the fuck away. You can have that whole plot. You can have the whole Luke Owen Baru plot on Tatooine and Luke is oblivious to what's going on. You just it was so simple to do and I'm screaming in my head, don't do it. No, you don't have Luke running from his home, getting chased by some fucking Inquisitor shit who's wounded. It's just you didn't have don't. You can do the whole Baru Uncle Owen that type of shit and then Make me think that there's some suspense that they might be hurt or killed. But it ain't gonna work. Right? We know they live. I think you gotta be smarter than that. I think the show's gotta fine tune these things and their meetings in their room, and someone's gotta look and go, no, this doesn't work. You can't have this eight hour or six hour fucking mini series that was supposed to be a movie. And then interject this stuff and do things that don't, like, it's hard. Like, sometimes when I look at a movie and I do a review or I do a podcast or whatever you call these fucking things, I sometimes say this is not for me, but I know why people are going to like it. These are the little things for me that annoy me and just bother me. Luke Skywalker, don't involve him in this shit. And maybe he'll never be involved again. But. You involved him giving or building up the crazy old Ben and Luke connection, and they did that at the last episode. However, I don't want... And then there was a part in there where I think Owen says to Luke, I says something like, the Tuscans are raiding places, you got to keep you safe, stay with your mother. And it's obviously not fucking Tuscans. He's not running from a Tuscan. And force powers being used all around. Just it just doesn't fit. With Leia, it works. The whole arc with her going on this adventure as a little kid with fucking Obi Wan as he rescues her is phenomenal. It's amazing. And I'm not saying nothing about the acting talent of the kid, Luke. He didn't get to do much. He's there to show, you know, young Luke. And and in this first part of the series, if there's more I'm not sure, but it's Leia's little adventure because Obi-Wan's sitting around, you know, pale, uh, a shade of his former self, just watching over Luke, and he gets a call from Bella Gatta that kidnapped my daughter, right? Spurs him into action, he does his thing, and that whole thing is just amazing. The chemistry, the acting, settings, all of it works. Worked really well. So in the end, we've got six parts. It's all good. These little nitpicks are just me complaining, just trying to highlight some things where it just doesn't make sense to me. But you're a Star Wars fan. You're, you're upset at what they did. This is great. Not much there. Even when I'm paying attention and I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for that episode that's going to throw things off because it happened to me in Boba Fett. Mandalorian didn't do it too much. But, like, decisions you got to make. And I don't want to see um, certain people, like, what was it? Uh, what was that movie where you showed how they got the blue, Rogue, Rogue One movie? I don't want to see a guy with a little stick and a pole beating up people. And even if he's got the force. Uh, like, some things just don't work with these Stormtroopers, armor plate, like, they're plating. And all in all... These are the things that have been built up over the, you know, 30-something years this has been out. Who knows how long, right? 77. And I'm really happy it was done. I'm so excited for the actors and actresses that really pulled this off and made it amazing. So kudos to everybody. This even mentioning Qui-Gon is, gave me chills and, you know, made me believe again <laughs> in that sense. This is what you would want to see. You want to 
you know, let's do a timeline where, because I'll do that in my own role playing. So I have, I have a Star Wars story that's meant to correct the movies, right? And one of my characters goes back and alters time, that type of thing, because I hated those fucking movies so much. This is like a fresh way to do it and just start over, but you got those horrible shit stains of a movie, movies, and you're not going to get away with it. You fuck things up. You'll get me on these things, you'll, but I'll never stop little looking for these. You know what? It's not that I look for them, and I did look for them at one part, because the music was not as impactful for me in this as I wanted it to be. There's some great stuff in here that I wanted a little more, and I'm not sure if that's... Uh, a TV plot type thing, but it works. It's just a minor nitpick for me. But wow, I mean, Obi Wan Kenobi. This series is spot on, good, um, great. And me bitching about little things is not important in the overall scheme of what this show tried to convey. It's ten years after, you know, Order sixty six and the Jedi were betrayed. There's this, you know, galactic political scheme that's hinted at, but not delved into like the prequels. But it's there, and it shows that they're not embarrassed by it. Because some of those movies are god awful in what they did, but there's so much to love in them. Uh, Qui Gon and Obi Wan and the Phantom Menace are amazing. Natalie Portman's great in every fucking thing. But yes, it's George Lucas giving too much power, no one to. Put him in his place. Okay. I'm seeing this resurgence after the fucking shit stains of The Last Jedi and whatever the fucking Rise of Skywalker bullshit. Like I said, Force Awakens, I'll give a pass. It, it's fun and you know, she's so endearing in it, Daisy Ridley. It's just captivating to watch. But this new era, these new shows, this... Uh, almost elevation of TV and cable to being prominent when I was younger. There were no movie stars on TV. Maybe if they did a commercial like in Japan or something. But, you know, it was you know not part of the thing. Now, this is great. Hugh McGregor, Hayden Christensen, getting able to do their thing and so beloved by fans. You can get every hater of the Phantom Menace and that whole prequel trilogy. And they will all... Praise Ewan McGregor's role, his performance, his little imitations of Alec Guinness once in a while. Because it's, you know, his portrayal of Obi-Wan, but you can tell when he's purposely showing you he's going towards the Alec Guinness. And maybe they'll do that in another series, you know, they'll shorten his hair, put a little more gray in it, be a little more aloof. But these are things he has to deal with, and it's serious, and it needed to happen now he's opened up and reconnected with the force in a stronger way he, you know he keeps saying a lot that he's not the man he was and all that stuff and that's the arc of the show done great i love it like i said these little nitpicks are just me complaining because my eyes roll back and i'm like oh you know i'm so yanked out of this show that i have to comment on it little things like uh, the music cues not being totally for me you know only worth mentioning because I could see people thinking about it. Um, but you go through every episode here, you know, six episodes. This is a lot of what I've been talking about. You got some things that do 13, like the Marvel series of Daredevil and all that stuff. The reason why they've done well, because those lulls, those episodes that not a lot happens, a lot of exposition and talking, are placed right. Now, they're not as done as well as maybe Iron Fist and whatever. But they knew what they were dealing with and planned it right. Oh, no, You can't do that a lot. I'm telling you, Book of Boba Fett is flawed. It's, as good as it is, as much fun as I had watching it, it's flawed in that way. And I think they're learning. This is precise, precision storytelling. Just enough lulls, just enough heartfelt moments, just enough action and action. I don't want to give spoilers away, but holy shit, Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Kenobi, showing the potential of their power, just great. 
the familiar settings, the ships, it just, it hits all the notes. And then you pull me out with some fucking stupid shit. Like, this is what borderlines me from saying perfection and absolute, absolutely phenomenal show. It's a great show. It's just all short of my vision of perfection of the show. And I mean, that's so, so hard to do. But I'm such a Star Wars fan. Star Trek. I'm just a geek at heart. Born in 1971. This is perfect area for me for everything was magic it didn't matter if it was really good or not right i watch fucking crawl like this stupid fucking movie with this starfish blade like i just you know i understand all that the psychology of that stuff i'm trying to look at this one with a critical eye and judging my justified anger at what they did at the movies and I think it's clearly gaining favor again because of what they're doing. Look, as flawed as the Mandalorian is or some of this bullshit they do with the short episodes and the nonsense filler, it's great. And looking at the Book of Boba, it's good. It just it gets you going. It's got the right feel and love. There's heart and soul behind it that feels like they care about me as an audience member. This one amazing just done for us for the love of the actors and their characters it just feels like it's so meshed together with love and you know care you know i'll take it every day what else can you say watch obi-wan kenobi the show is just uh uh, okay, there's another guy who plays a fucking fake Jedi. He was annoying. I, I don't know who the fuck he is. He looked very familiar. Right, maybe Kumar, whatever the fuck. Kumail. He plays Haja. A street level con artist. I, I didn't buy his arc either. You know, it just didn't work for me. But let's get to the Part of this, James Earl Jones nailing Vader. That scene with the split helmet and Anakin's voice, Hayden Christensen being mixed in. Fucking cool. Really good way to convey it. Even if it's a trope in a sense. This battle between <clears throat> Vader searching for Obi-Wan just works because it fits into what would happen and it feels normal and natural all this to work that way and you can see this type of conflict a motivation for vader and they even call on it with the emperor fucking great just awesome that chick who plays uh young princess leia fucking amazing you didn't get to see enough with luke but you can tell I'm going to trust them that they did it well. Um, you know, you get like voices in Ian McDermott, Emperor. You do it right. Look, these people are alive right now. They're still around. You know, James Earl Jones. I'm sure people could do fucking imitation Vaders these days. But this is what the fans wanted. Like, like I said, these are all right. the nitpick with the music. Minor. So minor. Because the music is great. It's just, I'm not hearing familiar cues I would have thought I would hear. The running shit with kids, okay, you know. It does really pull me out, but it's so minor, and I see what they're trying to do. You understand it. I think the greatest flaw, and it's not really a major one, is the Inquisitor, the Third Sister arc. How it's portrayed. What reveal is done, the reveal, the reveal, the real reveal, and the choices and the actions at the end of the show don't sit well with me. But holy shit, what a ride. I love this show. This is just, for me, awesome. Can I see other people picking it apart? I don't think so in the long run. Like, 
you might be angry at certain things like they decided to do. Because like I said, I never sat well with Luke is born at the end of this ancient history of the ancient Jedi who were extinct. And that's how it was fucking portrayed in the movies. No way. So that gap is always going to be a bother to people. It's not believable. No matter how much you do with 10 years of Jedi being hunted, you can't refer to the terminology and the words they used in the original Star Wars and ever think it was 20 years ago. It just doesn't work. But, in saying that, there will be people who just, these things that pull me out, a lot more pulls them out. I don't think there's a lot of that in here. I think there's really great performances. Some camera work is just fucking amazing. The way they frame things and hold people's um, images. Um, they, got, they, got, they got the same actors like um, playing Owen. God, you know what? I should really give actors credit. I said it was directed by Deborah Chow, um, Ewan McGregor. Let me name some of these actors, maybe. Let's see. Uh, Rupert Friend as the Grand Inquisitor. Sun Kang, the fifth brother. Moses Ingram as Reva Sevander. I think that's the one. Uh, Vivian Lyre Blair as the little girl. Fucking awesome. Kumail Nanjani. Eh, he's annoying. Hayden Christensen. Obviously, James L. Jones. Benny Safdie. Um, Joel Egerton. As I've seen him in some stuff. Awesome. Owen. Just great. Bonnie Piese is Baru. Simon Kessel. Um... Oh, fucking guy from... I knew I recognized him. Flea. The Red Hot Chili Peppers is Beck Nolper, who's a bounty hunter. Um, Jimmy Smith. Uh, Maurice Alvarez. Uh, like a lot of people you see only once or twice, but... Oh, Dale, what is it? Joel Edgerton. 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 As laws. He played in the movie in the prequels, I believe. The whole thing, it's all believable. It all meshes well. Good way of bridging the Phantom Menace, the prequels, to the new stuff. Watch it. I totally recommend this show. Obi Wan Kenobi, finally. You know, a Jedi seen the way we want to see. And we've seen the hints of this with Ahsoka and, you know, some of the other shows. But these are the people we love as much as the prequels are. Shit on Hugh McGregor has always been raised above it. Him and Qui Gon, that master party one uh, connection to student is amazing. No matter what fucking Jar Jar says. Anyway, Obi Wan Kenobi, watch it. I totally recommend this show to listen to me nitpick about this bullshit. There's some stupid shit they do, but look, it's a kids, you know, type show. If you want to get that and. I could see kids being hyped that they're running around and evading people. It's just it's done better, I think. However, Deborah Child gets an applause. She's nailing this. I was surprised that Hugh McGregor is a producer, Kathleen Kennedy, because you keep Kathleen Kennedy away from every fucking thing. But these are one of the things your name gets on, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, go fuck yourself. I hope so, because she's a fucking disaster. And I think I'll end that here. Like I said, six episodes. The arc of Obi-Wan reconnecting ten years after the movies, his failure, his redemption type thing. Leia's kidnapping brought him out, but he's protecting Luke, his obligations. Vader's quest for revenge and his new underlings, sort of, the Inquisitors. Just fucking great, you know. I really loved it. And I'm just going to nitpick to death because I'm just uh, getting old I guess <laughs> you know the older you get the more you don't give a fuck what you say type thing you know and who cares about pissing off some Star Wars fans this is all good it's great I loved it Um, I think let's give the writers some credit right Stort Beatty and Hussein Amini these guys they're on mostly everything Joby Harold and Hannah Friedman 
Hussein Amini and Stuart Beatty, uh, Joby Harold, Hannah Friedman, Andrew Stanton. Look, you got enough people in the room, you should have taken out and noticed those little fucking things, but <laughs> kudos. Obi-Wan Kenobi, I love it. Watch it. Become a kid again. This is great performances. The nuance, the ambience, the atmosphere it just works on so many levels. All right, I think that's it. Till next time, everybody, take care.